and welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today we're back with our mental health series with the great Jake Bloom, wrestling mindset coach, winning mindset coach, and mental health professional. Jake, thank you for joining us. No problem. Nice to be with you today. Absolutely. So let's um let's take it from the top in the mental health field. Talk about um your work in that space and what you've done, obviously outside of being a winning mindset coach. Mm -hmm. Well, when I think about that, uh, I started. It's interesting how I got into the field. I started. Um, I was an athlete in college and ended up getting hurt and then spending a lot of time in the recreation field and getting my degree in recreation management. Went to Eastern Michigan for a graduate assistantship. Started that sportsman, thought I'd work in college athletics. And when I did an internship, uh, helping coach in inner city uh, Detroit area, figured out that I really wanted to help kids out more. I already knew that, but I didn't want to do what my dad did as a teacher or so forth. So at that point I switched my focus to counseling. Uh, thought I was going to be a school counselor. And when I graduated, I started at a college here back home when I came back and spent roughly 13 years uh, focusing on college mental health and AODA, alcohol and other drug prevention and violence prevention work. And now I'm at a residential and uh, outpatient treatment facility here in the community, helping individuals deal with substance abuse and mental health. So, excellent, excellent. Well, I guess let's let's hit on that expertise a little bit. What are what are some of the best pre um, preventative for substance abuse? So maybe r red flags, as we call them, mm -hmm. that you see someone's going down that road and how to shift them in the other direction. Yeah. Well, at the, at the end of the day, really a lot of it is coming down to trying to figure out what's going on wrong in someone's life, I guess, because I, I have a hard time as long as I've done feeling it's just addiction. Often it's, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, mental health and addiction are like salt and pepper, ketchup and mustard, figuring out why the individual is feeling the need to use that substance to make them feel a certain way whether it's a substance or video game addiction or anything, what's not right and how are there's other ways that, you know, you can help the individual work through it or, you know, more so they have to figure out, you know, what's going to be better for them in their lives. You know, a lot of times a loss. And at the end of the day, really, when you follow it, there's a lot of trauma, different, uh, you know, when we say trauma, different unfortunate events that happen in an individual's life, whether it's loss of a parent, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, you know, loss of a job. I mean, this right now, COVID can be a trauma for a lot of people, you know, loss of a season for, you know, you look at high school athletes or college athletes, loss of identity through not being able to be an athlete right now and a lot of idle time on their hands and not really knowing how to fill it. Right. And I would think now we're, we're hitting the winter we are hitting that time now mm -hmm. and we didn't have that last year right it was right as we were getting out of the woods yeah. of, that, of that seasonal that the winter we right so outside, talk about that a little bit absolutely and you could be outside it was march-ish you know you could still go outside and being in the great northwest in wisconsin as i am it gets pretty cold and same with same with you we're usually we're hibernating in a wrestling room or we're, we're still moving and getting endorphins you know to feel good and trying to even find a place to be able to do that, not only for the athletes, but as a, as an aging coach really relies on coaching and moving in a room to get their exercise to feel better. Loss of right. routine. Right, right. Talk about that impact of COVID. I know the, the mm -hmm. most recent CDC statistics I saw, one in four uh, mm -hmm. kids between the age or young adults between the ages 18 and 22, something like or 25, serious suicidal ideation Absolutely. i saw the i saw the virtual failure rate failure rates for virtual learning jump from like 80 or from eight percent to it's, like a 20 to 40 percent it's astronomical how the impacts are when you look at so much disruption it's caused to you know their life and uncertainty and especially with that eight you know with any age but 18 to 24 year olds losing that social connection you know with that loss, I mean, we're humans, we're supposed to connect. And if we're not connecting, it's hard. I mean, they talk about whatever, it's like the Zoom fatigue, you know, that we're, we're constantly on Zoom and there's, there's fatigue with that because we can interact, but especially like as a coach or a therapist, 
you can't get everything when you can't be within five feet, three feet of a person to just so they can feel, you know, connected to you. Um, routines. I mean, think of all the, for the, for the teens, how many milestones have been taken, you know, going to prom, walking across the stage at graduation and just the sense of loss, you know, to try and put myself in a high schooler's shoes. I don't want to admit 24 years removed. It's hard to, but yeah, it is pretty, it would have been really significant. Definitely. And it seems like we just keep we were already moving in the direction of isolation, right? There's the TV, mm -hmm. TV generation. Then you start moving more to video games and then the yep. internet and then mm -hmm. cell phones. And we just kind of get close. We, we keep closing inward on ourselves. And mm -hmm. then it's like lockdown. It's like, we were, we were already not going in the right direction in a certain Absolutely. sense. I mean, when we were younger, if you wanted a friend to come outside and play, you had to knock on the doorbell. <laughs> you might've talked to the parent. If you had a girlfriend yeah. called up and it happened to be mother's day. Hi, can I speak to, <laughs> So and so, you got to wish them a happy Mother's Day. Make small talk a little bit. Now there's none of that. It's the thumbs. It's the texting. Remember the rotary phones? I don't know <laughs> where you had to dial them and, to, yeah. and hopefully pull the cord around the side of the room and shut the door so your brother couldn't hear that's you right. talking to someone, but they could still silently pick up and listen in. That's that's right. You had to be on the lookout for, exactly. But all those social <laughs> dynamics that were at play, mm -hmm. kids don't even think about that now. So we were already turning in on ourselves, and now we've yep. and now we've. And now you've been turned in on yourself by government. Well, even, I even think about it with my littles, my nine and seven year old ordering food at a restaurant. You know, so many people I go, no, if you want to eat, you need to order because they have to, it's a small thing, but it starts to teach assertiveness and confidence and just being able to look someone in the eye and say, no, I want the fries. <laughs> Not that. Right. You're absolutely right. And that was always something that's fresh in my mind. I mean, I've had a two year, I've two under two, so I'm not in that boat mm -hmm. yet, but I always thought that it's so important for them to, for them to order. And, and if they speaking up to an adult and they might get it wrong, they don't hear you. They have to repeat themselves and they're looking to you and it's like, go ahead. You know how to speak. Fix it. You, you got it. You can, you can tell them what you want. It's okay. Absolutely. You know, and routines and you think about with yeah. how important sleep is and these 18 to 24 year olds not picking on myself my sleep routines way off where you know you pick up the screen because you're and you wanted you know you want to escape for a while and all of a sudden you've been watching six hours of olympic wrestling video and you're like oh it's two in the morning what am i doing you know don't and, go wrestling yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely that's a blessing and a curse <laughs> but yep. it's the same thing with you know i talk so much to i work with a lot of high school kids too on trying to figure out how to stay connected, how, how to stay motivated. I mean, you know, and motivation is, it's so hard. It's such an interesting, it's a feeling. And, you know, we have to be, when we develop discipline, motivation, it creates freedom. But when they don't have an event that they're training for, or they don't see that they're going to even get to walk across the stage or what's college going to look like next year, the instant gratification that, you know, even like we're probably both on cell phones right now, we can do our whole jobs from our cell phone where we had to chase things, instant gratification. And now you're asking them to wait for things to come to them instead of it's tough, you know? Right. Oh, absolutely. What are you brought up? You mentioned having uh, routines, mm -hmm. doing, th doing things to keep yourself motivated. What are some other tips and strategies that people could do, especially during the COVID time? Mm -hmm. Well, I think especially as parents or as, you know, as parents of kids and as coaches, helping kids to, you know, and ourselves to acknowledge our feelings, to be, be honest on how we're feeling. And once we acknowledge it, you know, to identify the emotion behind it and really to work to figure out how we want to deal with that instead of having reactions. And it's easy to do trying to come up with solutions. You know, if you're, you're upset and you're frustrated, well, why am I upset and frustrated? You know, might not even be about the other person might be, well, I didn't get that done and I feel bad. Okay. So maybe I'll just say, you know, I didn't get to it. Give me an hour. I'll get it done and I'll get it to you. Um, mindfulness and meditation, just breathing. So many, um, you know, our, our breath work, if we can do teach kids a little bit of breath work and meditation and mindfulness, it controls emotion. You know, if our breathing is in control, we're going to be able to slow down 
You never see someone really mad that has slow and controlled breathing <laughs> or, or crying. <laughs> you know, he is, if we can control our, control our breath work, finding a simple app, doing deep breathing, you know, all different kinds of things and affirmations at the end of the day, doing some affirmation work and helping your kids identify what they're good at and helping them feel good about themselves because stinking thinking is so common and well, everyone's going to take shot. Life's going to take shots at us. And if we're a negative cheerleader for ourselves, we're not helping ourselves really try and help kids reset that in ourselves. Be honest about the messages we're sending ourselves. Practice gratitude. I can't, I mean, yeah, we're missing out on things, but we're finding new ways to, you know, there's still ways to, to get better. You know, if we're, you know, and connecting with our families again, figuring out how to sit at the kitchen tables some more than we were able to with all the activities. So really at the end of the day, looking at what we did accomplish and what we did have and what we, instead of what we didn't. And then if you need help, ask for it, you know, tell someone you're struggling, you know, especially as men or as young, young adolescent males, we don't often like to ask for help. And we often default to anger instead of what's feeling bad or sad, whatever it is. So trying to be honest with ourselves. Absolutely. So many good points right there. Knowing that you're not, knowing that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. well, I guess, I guess even beginning with that self-knowledge, that self-awareness, like you said, what's going on, mm -hmm. what am I feeling and why am I feeling it? Yeah. Right. And then you said to kind of like normalizing it, knowing other people are struggling too. Mm -hmm. focusing on the things you can control. What are the opportunities here? Mm -hmm. um, asking and then asking for help if, if we need it, knowing Absolutely. that especially as guys, we tend not to do that because <laughs> it's none of your business. Yeah. No, but no, it's, it's going to help you. So I need to know it. I even try my internet wasn't, I pulled my, my work laptop up before I was getting on this and it normally just connects to Wi-Fi. I'm not a technological genius. And I was like, why isn't my VPN working? And, my wife had to come down Stacy and she's like you're not connected well I'm not gonna think of that so I should have just went and asked for I would have just walked upstairs and said Stacy what's you're better at this can you look at this it would have been solved instead of getting upset about it just again just ask for help <laughs> as simple as that yeah. is but and that's a recurring theme on our entire mental health series everyone we spoke to mm -hmm. the different athletes that were struggling with depression or um, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts. Absolutely. They were saying that that's, that's the key thing, ask for help. And it's, it's one of those things where we do it for a strength coach, but mm -hmm. a lot of times, like, okay, so apply that to the mental health, um, the same philosophy there. You wouldn't say, oh, I don't want to ask for a strength coach because I, I don't want them to think I'm physically weak. No, you're Absolutely. just trying to focus on getting stronger. And then mm -hmm. same thing with our, with, with our, a lot of times our personal coaches. I want to yep. get better at technique. I don't think, well, I'm so deficient. I'm such a bad wrestler that I need a coach. It's, no, I'm trying to become a better wrestler. Well, mental mm -hmm. and emotional health is darn important. Most important. Absolutely. You think, you know, you think of ask athletes about mindset, how important that is with their mm -hmm. you know, performance and mindset and mental health are like, <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Confidence is part of mental health, <laughs> being able to relax That's under, it. you know, absolutely. They go so much together, you know, and absolutely. And just helping, yeah, even admitting, you know, that's the big thing, just admitting, hey, I need, I'm struggling today. I need yeah. to take a mental health day. People are like, what, what's that? Well, really take a day for yourself to, even for me, it's get organized. Right. <laughs> try, try and get everything in line and know what I need to do first and be able to go to the, to go on the treadmill for a while. <laughs> so, right, right. And, and it's true. We have to acknowledge it, that we all go through ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And and just because we work on our mindset, this is seltzer, by the way. I'm not drinking on the oh. job here. <laughs> but, I, 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 I know those seltzer cans well, so I knew what it was. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, j j just knowing that even when we work on our mindset, it's not like you never have a bad day. The idea no. is to make the highs higher, make the lows not as low, the highs more frequent and the lows less frequent. But you still have lows. Mm -hmm. And some of those lows are low and you know to ask for help at those times. And I, I think so often, especially today, how everything's so instant and so fast to get people to understand that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. 
life is, you know, becoming an athlete is it, everyone's going to develop at different times. And, you know, if you stick with something long enough and you work with it, you're going to be able to get better and ask for the help along the way when you have deficiencies, whatever it is. That's it. Don't go it alone. And just mm -hmm. even just for, if you're, if you don't care, if you, even if you didn't, if you weren't thinking so much about just mental health in general, just think in terms of efficiency, economy of, of, of your time, valuing your time, getting oh. from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And when you catch yourself stumbling on the inside or, or having low mm -hmm. areas, just get it done. <laughs> Take care of it. And there's, to me, there's such a connection. We know it as athletes, mind and body. If you, if you're taking care of your body, your mind's going to be clear and your mental health is going to be better to, and as we get older, we often, our sports go away and we don't, because I think back, I was able to manage so much of my, my own ADHD through movement and getting hyper moving so much as an athlete. And as you get older, more things come to life that goes away. Having go, oh, I need to, I got to make this a priority because everything else is better when I move. <laughs> right. Right. It's that's that, like you said, that reciprocal inter interaction, mm -hmm. our, our mind affects our body, our body affects our mind. So, you know, taking motion, acting, the, acting the way you want to feel. Mm -hmm. And, and even if you're, and if you're feeling a certain way, telling yourself, yes, it, it's just the whole connection. So making yeah. sure you're, you're, you're looking at things holistically. Everyone Absolutely. says, I'll oh, be, be the total package, be the total package, spirit, mind, and body. <laughs> and it's really, for most people, you're just kind of saying it more as a punchline or a catchphrase, mm -hmm. but, but are you actually living it? Mm -hmm. And I think a big part with anything is taking time to reflect on how drawing inward and being honest with ourselves and doing an appraisal of where we're at, you know, where am I at emotionally? Where am I at physically? How am I doing as a, you know, as a, as a son or daughter, as a parent, as a coach, where do I want to be in what's, and it's usually small adjustments that, Oh, I need to drink more water. I'm, I'm feeling dehydrated. That means I'm, that means I think I'm hungry. I'm eating. Oh, okay. I need to drink more water. Everything gets a little better. It's those small habits that over time just become part of us that make things a lot easier and things are going to be right. tough too. That's, to acknowledge things will be tough <laughs> right that's that's an important thing it seems like such a small concept there but you have to expect things to be difficult you're mm -hmm. going to hit adversity prepare for the worst and hope for the best that's it that's awesome and we hit on a lot there in that short amount of time i mean i hope i hope our listeners when this thing goes live people are just taking notes because everything you said there those are all gold nuggets of information so thank you very much jake i really you're appreciate welcome. it it was a lot of fun. It's, not, it's perspective for myself. I'm going, oh, yeah, I need to do some more of these things myself. Do as I say. I need to do as I say more <laughs> as a human. Right. Well, this well, this this will count as my personal um, mental health and my personal mindset <laughs> coaching on the day. So I, I appreciate it. it. It absolutely does help me, too, and reminds me, OK, let's let's get back on mm -hmm. the horse. Thanks absolutely. a lot, Jake. Thank you for all the You're help. Welcome. Thank you for all you do for all of our athletes. No problem. It's a it's a grateful to be able to work with all the athletes it's you know it keeps us better <laughs> it keeps us fresh and it's a way to try and you know help others because if we're doing that we're going to make ourselves and others better and feel good so that's it have that's a blessed one about. you too jake take care